Batteries and solar panels will only get you so far on your rover or ship. To truly feed your ever-growing need for power and take those long excursions into the unknown, you're going to need to fully recharge your rover at your base and create an automated way to transfer your mined resources from your rover to your refinery. So I'm going to show you how to create a super cool charging and transfer station with the hinge. There are about three different components that can do what I'm going to show you. The advanced rotor, the coupler, and the hinge. I'm going to show you how to use the hinge method because for a rover, it really does seem to fit. And it's definitely the rule of cool. Having successfully expanded my rover with a third storage compartment and made a double hinge mechanical arm to operate my drill, I really need a better way to charge my rover and transfer all the material. I found that the solar cells worked, but really weren't keeping up with the power use of the rover, particularly if I used it more than once every day cycle or so. All we've got is short range. And I've heard once I start using flying ships, that power usage gets even higher. So I wanted to get the charging thing worked out while I was still using the rover. Also, transferring my ore by carrying it by hand back and forth from the rover to the refinery was getting old really fast, so an automated method of transfer was a must. I had created this little double ramp to work like a service area to park the rover and work on the wheels and whatnot. So I was going to improve the whole layout to turn it into the charging and transfer station. First thing was to raise up the whole ramp system, so in the future I'd have more space to get underneath and access things. Next. I needed to create a set of conveyor tubes from my station's main conveyor junction over to my rover. That was the easy part, and I decided to set another conveyor junction so I could just branch things off from my conveyor arm or tubes to other things. I don't know to what yet, but to other things in the future. Now the thinking part came in. What I envisioned was attaching a small hinge to the front conveyor port of my rover's cockpit and connecting it from there. It just seemed natural. But before I go any further, I need to explain some special properties about the hinge that's going to make this whole attachment mechanism possible. The hinge comes in two parts, the actual hinge itself and the hinge part or head. When you place a hinge, it actually by default places both pieces. And I also explained a lot of that in my last video. But now I was going to take that one step further. What you can do is use the grinder to remove the hinge head after you place the hinge. This essentially allows you to use the hinge as a two-part component. Place the hinge part, or head as I'm calling it, on some other or separate object then connect the two parts through the hinge control panel. That's what you get to by pressing K. So you can see where I'm going with this. I can put one half of the hinge on my rover and the other half affixed in some way to my base and be able to connect and disconnect them at will. Pretty cool, right? And because a connected hinge will transfer power, it would effectively allow me to create a kind of plug-in mechanism for a charging station. Ah, but not so fast. There was more to make it all work. My rover is made out of what is called small grid components, and my base out of large grid components. I talked some about the incompatibility between large and small grids a little in that last video, and that is the same issue I have here. But there is a solution, and here's how you can connect large grids to small grids with the hinge. Place a large 3x3 three three hinge. You don't even have to fully weld it yet. Grind out the head of the large hinge and weld up the rest of the actual hinge. You can look right at the base of the inside part of the hinge and press K to open that hinge's control panel. Here, you'll be presented with two options to place a large hinge head or a small hinge head. Select the small hinge head. You can then weld up that small hinge head you placed inside of the large hinge. What you've done is essentially create an adapter between the large and small grid sizes through the hinge. 
Like I said at the beginning, you can also use the rotor and coupler as two other ways to make this conversion or connect things, but I really like this hinge method. So with that, I was able to place my large hinge with the adapter and continue on with my small conveyor tubes to create the attachment point for my rover, which leads to the next small obstacle. But it was actually kind of a cool thing too. The height of the rover's hinge piece didn't match with that of the base's hinge piece. I forgot the base's part was lower for a sec and hit the attach button in the control panel, which tossed the rear of the rover up, but it didn't cause any permanent damage. Yeah, if the hinge is close, but not exact, it'll kind of snap to it. But this is also something you can control, which is the distance at which the hinge will be able to attach when the command is sent. The fix of the height difference was simple. The suspension on the rover also has a control panel, and there's a setting there to raise and lower the height of that suspension. I always operate my rover with the suspension raised up, so it was a simple matter of finding that perfect height to make the rover match up with the base. Negative eight was my magic number, and with a successful hookup, I checked the battery charging. And it was amazing, just juice pouring into my rover. Then I realized, I made a tiny mistake. The small port on the front of my cockpit seemed ideal for the hookup. In the minute Phil and I saw it, we decided it was ideal, didn't we, Phil? Yeah, that's right, Bob, but idea. But unfortunately, it wouldn't convey any of the resources. Between the cockpit and the storage containers, I had put the batteries, and they didn't have ports to convey resources, so a little reconfiguration was needed. I thought about rotating the cargo containers, like I had done on that third container on the back, so that the small port would be on top. Then I could run a series of small conveyor tubes through the channel between the two solar panels from the front of the rover to the containers, but that would interfere with the drill laying flat. So I had a plan B. If I ran a conveyor tube up from the side port of the cargo container and under the solar panels to the front, it looked like it would miss the hitbox of the wheel suspension. And with a little contouring around the cockpit, I had a new connection point on the rover. In fact, I liked this setup better. On the base side, I could come straight out and avoid the little snorkel I had before and give me more room to move around in front of the rover. I was also able to see the hinge piece from inside the rover and get them lined up really good without having to go third person. I also really liked the little lights on the conveyor tubes and having the tubes running on the outside and wrapped around everything gave it a cool industrial look. All this opened up even more possibilities. I was able to use a conveyor junction in the top center of the rover and come off the other side with a sorter that would only allow gravel to go through and an ejector to pump out any excess gravel. I did have to tinker with the sorter and ejector settings a little bit, but yeah, out came the little gravel cubes, even if I do need to make them dump out a little farther away. To totally pimp out this charging station and resource transfer hookup, you want to get in the cockpit. Press G and set up the components on the rover's quick toolbar. You can create groups of components by opening up the regular control panel of your rover. Hold control and highlight all the components you want to control together, like my wheel suspensions, and assign it to a named group. Then you can select that named group from the G window, pull down the group to the toolbar, and set a button to whatever thing you want to operate. I had ones to lower the max speed of the rover, so I could slowly crawl it up my service ramp. Others to raise and lower the suspension to match up with the base hinge head, and another to actually attach or detach. Total automation of the whole process without ever leaving the rover or going into third person. It just felt really good and made for decent game immersion. A tip on this automated setup is to make sure you put the actual hinge half of the hinge on your rover. That's the only way you can fully control the hinge. The hinge head doesn't have the same control panel options as the actual hinge half. This whole thing is working great. 
And now that I can get a regular flow of minerals in here, it's time to start fleshing out an actual base. And truthfully, I don't think I'm quite through improving the rover. But now you know how to be a master of the hinge and use it to create a charging and resource transfer station for your ship or rover. I think I at least need some lights to go with all this supercharged power. Yes, more lights, more hinges. Time to really go next level. Hope you enjoyed and I'll be talking to you later.